Now do not. I'm gonna get ready for a Thanksgiving meal this year. The last year, I know I think I did the uh, bacon covered turkey. Man, that turned out good. And if you want directions to that, see that video. This year, we'll do something a little bit different. For one, I'm going to do Cajun casserole. And man, this casserole encompasses a lot of different things. We will have chicken. We will have some sausage. We're going to have some uh, some beef. It's going to have wild rice. Man, it's just a good flavorful dish. Check out some of the ingredients I got down here. I'm going to have some baked chicken. I got in here, I'm going to have some, some lean ground beef. I'm going to have some livers. I'm going to have some Andouille sausage. It's going to be real, real good. I might even, I was thinking about even putting some crawfish on top. I don't think I'm going to do that, though. So anyway, let's go ahead with this. When we get started, I'm going to chop up some of these ingredients. we get rendering some of them down, and we'll make this casserole. Okay, first we're going to start preparing some of the already cooked ingredients. I got these chicken breasts. That I just cooked uh, this afternoon. I tell you a good way if you need cooked chicken or something for a casserole like this, and you know, because this adds a lot of time to your prep work. You know, if you had to bake off this chicken, what I do before I go to work or something is I just throw my chicken breasts in a crock pot and uh, pour a little bit of cream of chicken soup over them, maybe a little milk. That's just enough to keep them moist. Uh, you know, doesn't add that much flavor. You can put a little, little sloppy mama or something on there, but you know, it just makes it turn out real moist cooking on low while you're at work. And you can come home and it'll be just like this and you can just cool it off and chop it up. And that's all we're going to do. We're going to chop up some chicken. Okay. Just probably enough chicken right here. Yeah, probably a little bit too much. We'll go ahead and set that off on the side in the bowl. And you know, that just gives us some, some good white meat chicken there. Now I'm going to wash this off and get started on some of the other stuff. Okay, now let's bust up a little bit of this on it. Let's see. About half of this right now. Let me see what we're standing. Man, this is, this is one of the best ingredients in the world. Ah, you smell that smoke. It's wonderful stuff. That's how I do this, okay? When you get your long flat piece like that, then you want to cut it down the center. Okay, go ahead and cut it, get flat out, just like that, you want to flip it over and just make your little slits down the side like this, keep going with that, you want to just wash that skin, and then you can turn it sideways, And just dice it. And dice in a little bit of pieces, just like that. That's what we want. Just those little bitty fingers to dice on doing. Okay, now that I got the on doing busted up, let's go ahead and prepare some of the other stuff. We'll gonna cook up some of the other ingredients, chop them up. While we get a pan heating up, I'm gonna go ahead and wash some of these these chicken livers here. It's just how I like to do it. Go ahead, turn the cool water on. You can strain it, pull that down in there, and you can finish those off. It's kind of, I don't know, let's get some of that blood stuff like that off of them. And we'll rinse these off and we'll let them drain them in before they cook. Okay, that'll be pretty good right there. Okay, now we got the hot pan. Let's pour this hot bouillon on there. A little bit of that brown off in that pan. So we'll have to give it some oil, fat. This other stuff, plus, you know, it's been smoked and been thoroughly cooked all the way through. So let's brown this off for a few minutes. Okay, now you can see the sausage is kind of browned down there nicely. I'm going to go ahead and put the sausage on the side here, on the plate. And we're going to get ready to start browning some of this other stuff. Man, that sausage smells so, so good. It's unbelievable. Okay. Just get that sausage there. Oh, yum, yum, yum. Okay, now, let me get the next thing. Okay, so next I put about a half a stick of this salted butter in this pan. Alright, so it's butter nice and melted. So we're gonna butter poach some of these chicken livers. 
All right. That's just how we get them ready for this recipe. Same as I did, uh, if you watch my dirty rice, it's very similar. Basically, this is almost like a dirty rice casserole we're making. So we've got this melted butter here. Let's go on in and start laying some of these livers in here. I'm just going to cook them in that butter. Man, that's going to be good. Butter poached. It is the best way i found to cook the liver to get it the consistency where I like it and good for this dish. Okay. So go ahead and let that cook for a minute on that side. Then we'll turn it in just a second. Okay, so that's going to be cooked just a moment. We'll start flipping them. So you get that nice golden brown on each side. This is really... This is a meat you don't want to leave out. This recipe, or any like dirty rice or something, this just really gives it that nice flavor. Let's uh, let's let's flip these just. Let me maybe we'll move this and switch them around a little bit. Once they cook them more, another. Let's have some tongs like this. All right, let's let these continue to sit here and poach. Okay, now that the uh, livers have browned up nicely, you can tell. See how beautiful that one looks right there? Go ahead and set them aside on a piece, piece of paper towel. Man, oh man, yes sir. Make sure they're cooked through and through. All right. Now we're going to drain some of this grease out of this pan. Okay. Now that I drain that off some, go ahead and we'll go in with the ground meat. Come on now. Got some lean thing. You got to go in. The lean ground meat there. Hopefully we'll pick up some of that oil and stuff. My wife picked that up. I lean and I normally use. That's fine. We've got plenty of fats and flavor in there from everything else. And we'll just brown this off and we'll pick up all that goodness off the bottom of that pan as well. It's going to be good. Okay, now we'll strain the ground meat. All right. Okay, now while that ground meat's straining, I'm cutting up them chicken livers. Remember, I want these all diced. I had to let them cool for a minute. Then we're gonna dice these all up and get them put up in the mix. It's gonna be good. Okay, now in another pot here, I brought some water to a bowl. And what I'm gonna do, I've got two packs of dirty rice mix. Yeah, I know I'm using it from a mix, but this is fine for this recipe. Alright, I'm just making a double mix recipe here. This is, happens to be this Zatarain's, I don't know if you can see their dirty rice mix. You know, add the appropriate amount of water to the pot with the rice. In fact, I'm going to add in now some of the meat. We'll add in the, the livers to there. All them diced up livers. It's going to add a lot of good flavor. I'm going to add the ground meat as well. If I can get in here. Dang. Come on, get in here. Damn mess all over the place. Look at that running all down the cooktop. Add a little bit more water to that. Find some water. Gosh, look. Okay. A little bit more water. Okay. Stir the essences. Bring this back to a bowl. 
As soon as this comes back to boil, I'm going to turn it down and let it simmer for about 25 minutes. All right. That's going to make a hearty little stew there. Let's bring it back to a boil real quick. Okay, now while we're waiting on that rice, it's going to be great for this. We haven't done it in a minute. Let's make a roux. We got your butter. We got a flour. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's make a roux. We need a roux here. It's going to thicken up this, oh, this casserole, something fine here in just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and start them off in this pan. Turn it down a little bit low, low. We're going to break all this flour up. And of course, for those of you that hadn't made a roux, if you're new to this, you can't quit stirring. you got to keep stirring. This stuff will burn, burn. Now, this is where my roux butter comes in. My roux stir is clocking him on. Let him go to work. Let him go ahead and keep that stirring. It'll make it good right there. Just keep on going, buddy. Keep on going. Actually, since this roux is looking kind of thick, I'm going to add a little tidbit of butter. We'll do it like that. That'll get thickened out, thinned out, just nice for us. Turn the heat down a little bit low, and we're just letting that flour just cook, cook right there. It'll be perfect. Okay, well that roux stirs away right over there, and the rice finish is cooking. I'm gonna heat my pan back up here, and we get started again. Uh, first off, I'm gonna get some uh, a little bit of oil. I got a little bit of fat in there already. I'm gonna get this. Uh, I'll do it back in there, okay? That'll be good, good, good. Okay, heat that. Okay, now that that's starting to heat up, I'm gonna go one pack of trendy. All right, you know what trendy is, is basically all it is is cut up onions, celery, you got green bell pepper in there, a little bit of red bell pepper, and this one's got a little bit of parsley, okay? We're seasoning. We're gonna stir this in, and we're gonna we we'll saute that trendy there in that sausage. Well, it's gonna be real good. And now that the vegetables are starting to cook down, let's add the seasoning. I got some slap your mama. I got some old bay. I got a little bit of garlic powder. And I've got a little parsley. Slap your mama old bay garlic powder. I put about a teaspoon, a little more each. It's just going to really give it some zing, okay? I'm gonna start to stir that in. Oh yeah, you can smell that's gonna brighten that up. Really brighten that up. Yum. Okay. Let's just stir that in there just a little bit. Now, let me get something else. Start working some of that chicken in here. Remember that chicken we had from earlier? Go ahead and put that white meat chicken. Be good right there. The chicken's going to absorb a lot of flavor. We'll just mix it in here with the mix. Just keep mixing it in. It's going to be so good. I'm telling you what. Stir that in. Just smell that wonderful smell, the aroma, all that sausage and the vegetables and everything. Real, real good in there. All right. Real good stuff. Now I'm gonna check that rice. Give this rice a check. I just took it off. There it is. Look at that. Beautiful, fluffy. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Let's fluff that rice just for a second. I'm gonna keep that hot while we're doing the rest of this meal, okay? Okay, now that I'm stirring this up, got this going good. I think my roux's ready. Alright. Take my rooster off. Sit this dude over here. Go ahead and add some of this root to this. Right now, let's see. Got about half of it. Okay. Now, instantly, see how that root kind of clumps up with everything? It's all nice and thick. And we just want to stir that in. Get that all nice mixed in with everything. Get a little bit more of it. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna keep them stirring though. Keep them stirring. There we go. Now I've got some cold chicken broth about 
It's about three cups. I'm going to go ahead and put it in about a cup at a time. And just stir this in. It's going to thicken up now because it's got that roux in there. Turn this down low, low. See how thick that is? It looks almost like a, uh, like a jambalaya or something. Go ahead and s'more this chicken stock in there. Man, this is packed with flavor. This is a flavorful dish here. Tell me what. All right. Now we get mixed in and turn the heat up just a little bit. Just didn't want to burn anything on the bottom. We'll have a little bit of extra broth there. You could use turkey broth. You could use whatever. I had that chicken broth, that juice from cooking those chicken breasts. In that crock pot all day. Use that. Look at that. Oh boy. Now, tell you what. That wasn't good enough already. Man. And then add a little bit more like that. We'll just be kind of loose. Got one more good ingredient here. I know I talked about it. Heck, we might as well. Let's kick it up with some crawfish. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, wouldn't be Cajun Thanksgiving without it. Some nice fresh crawfish tails. I just want to mix these in right here toward the end. So you don't want these to overcook at all. So we're going to fold these crawfish tails in. I'm going to turn this heat. Heat back to medium. We're just going to fold these in. Okay, I'll just let this simmer a couple minutes. I just got it all mixed in. That's where it looks wonderful. Look at that. I'm going to tell you what. That, that's just a gorgeous picture right there in itself. Just that wonderful bright crawfish tails. That Trinity and that chicken. With the broth and everything. That's just wonderful stuff there. But what we're going to do, we're going to transport this in the pot with that rice. Then, we're going to make that ultimate Cajun casserole. Alright, y'all bear with me. Okay, so let's get over here. Let's start the mixing process. You got that hot, dirty rice sitting right down there. And we're going to come across with this creamy, wonderful seafood and chicken and sausage. Look at that. Oh, yes, sir. Just going to mix it right off in there. We're just pot of Cajun heaven. Man, oh, man. Everything in there good. Woo! Woo! Alright. Give this a stir. Fold. There we go. Perfect, perfect. Mm, you'd probably just eat this just like this if you wanted to. But if you let it bake, let all this wonderful stuff just simmer together, it's going to be even better. And especially better the next day. Like we're making it for some Thanksgiving stuff. So go ahead and just roll that around, get it stirred up, get ready for the pan. Before I pour that casserole up, I got to thinking. It'd be a shame not to put some sort of topping on that. So I just took a thing of saltine crackers and I crushed them up. Took me about a, about a half a stick of butter, put there in this pan. You can brown these crackers just for a second. You gotta have some little, little crispy wrispies on top of that casserole just to give it a little bit more pop. So we'll brown these up just for a second. I'll show y'all something too about these cracker toppings. Right before they're done, if you just go ahead, sprinkle a little bit of a little bit of Old Bay in there. It'll give some real good flavor. Just a little bit like that. And these crackers. Now I'm going to turn the heat off. And uh, we're about to spread this top. This is going to be real, real good. Okay, now let's put it together. Fine. Alright, I got my, my dish right here. 
Might hit with a little bit of a little bit of pan. Just in case. Whatever. It'll bring it from sticking. Now, get this nice and mixed. Dump some of this in here. Okay. And this might take two of these. I don't know. You know how I am. I always seem to make. Never make too little. Put it that way. Alright. Press that down. Oh yes, uh, put that all down in there. See what you can see good. Move this thing. We can help out here. Some light over here. Get some light over here. It just seems dark in here. All right. Now, where's my big spatula? That's what I need. A plow there. A lot of beautiful seafood and everything down in there. Okay. Whoop, whoop. All right. Let's see. A little extra in this pocket over here in this corner. Try to get it even. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Let's go with these bread crumbs or the cracker crumbs. Sprinkle them on top. Still pretty hot. Yeah, my hands are clean. Let's see. This just smells still wonderful. I can still smell it. The sausage and the seafood. You know, from the crawfish cooked and the chicken broth. It smells wonderful. I won't put too much topping on there. I won't take too much away from it. That wonderful rice and everything. Now I got some, um, I had some uh, smoked gouda I just kind of grated, had left over for another night. Something I was making, I figured, heck, we'll put a little bit of, what's a casserole without a little bit of cheese on top. You know, I'll, I'll add a little pizzazz to it. And add a little bit of smoky flavor to complement that, um, uh, do it in there. Oh yeah, it's going to be good right there. We'll just put that out, sparsely on top. I'm glad I got that little bit left. I can put that little bit in there, a little pan, make me a little sample. And save this one for Thanksgiving. I'm gonna show y'all what we're gonna have for Thanksgiving here in a minute. But there we go. Go ahead and push all that off on there. There we go. Now I'm gonna pop that in the oven on 350. And we're checking about 30 minutes. Hey, so I was going to show y'all what we have for Thanksgiving tomorrow, or the day after tomorrow. This is a turducken, and this is from Polche's uh, Butcher Shop in Broche, Louisiana. And this is certified Cajun. Like I said, this is from Polche's. I'll post a link to a little uh, YouTube video about his place there in Louisiana, which is a certified Cajun product. Letting them, uh, letting them thaw out in the fridge here, but uh, that thing is a turkey, a turducken, which is turk. Uh, let's see, what do I like call it? It's a uh, turkey with a duck inside of it, with a chicken inside of it. It's gonna be a real good dish, but I can't wait to see. I've never tried one, but this year, since um, I'm actually gonna be working the day after Thanksgiving. Working the day before, I don't have much time to take a turkey and brine it and do like I did last year. So I got that bird, ordered it there, certified Cajun from Louisiana. And we're going to do it up and I'll make a film it and we're going to have it with that super Cajun casserole. I think it's going to be real good. Hey, you know, I just got this little taster casserole. I thought we going to save the big one for the, for the feast, for dinner. And like I said, well, how I made that casserole. You can make it up to the point that I did and just put it in the refrigerator and then bake it off for about 30 or 45 minutes the next day, the day of uh, the Thanksgiving or whatever. So I'm glad I had enough to make this little one here. Go ahead and show y'all 
Look at that, you can see that wonderful sausage, the crawfish, it smells wonderful. Let me get a fork and let's taste this. Okay, so let's get a taste. Man, it looks good. You see those big crawfish tails in there, you can see all the andouille, everything else, you can smell it. Mmm, mm -hmm. Tell you what, mm. it was so good. That is like it's an explosion of flavor. If you can imagine a really good gumbo. But then you take it down and you get that consistency with that dirty rice and you can taste that chicken flavor and that poultry all just wrapped into one. If you like good Cajun food and you like nice rich food, that is a wonderful dish. You really got to try this Cajun casserole. This is something I just came up with honestly the other day. I got to thinking, I was thinking about some ingredients, I was thinking about that turducken, and I was thinking about mixing and matching flavors. I said, hey, let's just do a casserole and let's just kind of roll a few ingredients into one or a couple of dishes into one. And that's what I came up with. So that's what I tried. So I suggest you try it. We'll have it again with the turducken on Thanksgiving. But that is a really, really A-plus dish there.